You know, the learning the voice of the Holy Spirit and learning to obey is probably one of the greatest, I think, learning curves that we have in Christianity. There are several of them, I believe. Learning to use your gifts. Well, learning to use your gifts is learning to listen and obey. Learning to maybe give and serve. Those things are still on that same learning curve of learning to listen and obey. Learning to grow up and not be in dissension and not fussing and fighting with your spouse and getting along with people at work and all that, that's learning to listen and obey. It all comes back to the same thing. Are we listening to what God's telling us, and are we doing that? Because we can hear him and not do it. Amen? And there may be some people whose natural inclinations would be to obey God and they haven't even heard him. You know, they just obey God because other people are. They're in the right circumstances, the right church and kind of thing. But we all need to learn to listen to God for ourselves. I love a good word, amen? I love to be prophesied to. I love to be told things that God's wanting to do with me. But I also like it when it's a confirmation that I've already heard it. And I know that I know. Woo! You know, when we were coming up here, some of you probably haven't heard this story. I don't know if I shared it for a while. We felt like we were to do the merge and to come up here and be a part of this body. And, and uh, both congregations was 100% for it and everything. Well, right before that happened, uh, Pastor Dan, for some reason, you know, he's not here right in the moment. Well, that was <laughs> something happened. I kept missing him. I'd talk to the board members. I'd talk to the Indiana district. I'd talk to the pastor here. I'd talk to everybody except Pastor Dan. And uh, I said, yeah, it looks like we were, we're looking at the idea of maybe merging with the church up at Batesville. And he just kind of gave me this look with his jaw, you know, dropped that far. And he said, uh, I didn't uh, tell you about that word you got, did I? I said, what, what, what word? He said, remember when we went over and took the teens to that prophetic church over in Seymour? He said, the pastor there came up and gave me a word. I said, he, he gave you a word? He said, yeah, he gave me a word for you. And he came, he came up and said, I have a word for your pastor. And the Lord is saying, Batesville, Batesville and Oldenburg, go there and drill. I prepared a harvest for you in Batesville. Well, I don't know about you, but I went, Ooh. whoa. Now, we were already on the road to do it, wasn't we? Before, before I even heard that. And, uh, and it was like, man, confirmation time. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. And you know, we never had one bump in the road and everything. I wish everything that I did was like that. Don't you? Amen. I, you know, I wish going to the gas station was that easy. Hallelujah. You know, I never know which pump to go to, and if I drive Cheryl's car, I'm on the wrong side, because her stupid thing's on the wrong side of the car. <laughs> and how many times do you make that mistake over and over and over and over? You know, you're just used to pulling up with your car, and then here it is, the, the, the gas thing's on the other side. Well, I've done it several times. And you know, sometimes we kind of wonder, how often do we make the same mistakes when it comes to obey the voice of God. We don't move when he says move. We're going to get around to it one day. I know a guy one time who he had, he had felt the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, this was he was he was standing there making a pot of coffee when, when God's presence came. And he knew that he just said he told me this later, he said, I knew that if I stopped what I was doing, God would heal me right then. He said, but I wanted to get the coffee done. <laughs> Bad choice. Amen? Amen. Should have laid it aside. The good to the last drop at that moment was Jesus. Amen? And he needed to, need to get a hold of it. You know, when God's saying to do what we're supposed to do, then we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to submit to authority, according to the Bible. So, when we do not submit to what God's telling us to do, then who really is our authority and who is our king? To whom do we really obey? Usually it's to ourselves. Amen? Sometimes it's to a world system. It depends on uh, the circumstances. You know, you can see that I broke that out into acronyms. How are we going to be able to serve God? Well, I think that there's four things that we ought to do. The first one, of course, if we're going to obey, is obedience. Obedience is the number one thing that we have to think about. We've got to be obedient to what it is God is telling us. Now, God speaks to us through his word, amen? So we need to be obedient to the Word. But beyond the Word, God has direction for us individually. On our daily lives, the course and the plan for our life, He wants to direct our steps. 
He wants to make our paths straight. He wants to put us on the right road and head us in the right direction. He wants us to accomplish his will. He's got a purpose and a plan for our lives, even when we don't feel like we have purpose or we have a plan. And, the, and if you feel that way today, it's just because you haven't discovered what that purpose and plan is. And will you know the whole thing? No. That's why we need obedience. Because you get obedient in the first thing, and he shows you the next thing. He may give you a picture down the road of what it's going to look like at the end, but not tell you how every step it's going to take to get there. You know, he's shown us that we're going to plant churches. How are we going to do all that? I don't know. You know, we, there's been interesting things happening here and there. And, uh, you know, some of that can be planned out. Some of that can be in a 10-year plan. And some of that's just going to happen when it happens. We can fly by the seat of our pants. We can plan it down to the last detail. But if we don't listen to God, we're not going to get there. Amen? You know, we plan like we're going to be here for the rest of our lives, and we live like we're going to leave tomorrow. You know? I had a dream last night, and it, I don't think it was prophetic, but it was an interesting dream. And I was in a classroom, and I was the old guy in the classroom. There was a lot of young people in there. That's not getting as hard as it used to be, being the old guy in the room. And... Uh, this young person was sharing something, and I, I asked a question after he did to the teacher. I said, can I ask a question? Is that scriptural? And uh, I think what he was asking was it's darkest. I think what he made was some comment to the degree that it's always darkest before the storm. And I, and I don't know, something in me at that moment didn't agree with that particularly because I don't know that things have to be dark and stormy all the time. Amen? And I don't know, sometimes storms blow up awful quick and we don't even realize they're going to happen. I wouldn't have got in the boat with Jesus if I knew a storm was coming. Come on, you know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes those storms are there and then we need to say, peace, be still. We need God's peace and stuff in them. But I don't know, it's always darkest right before the storm. In fact, some of the worst storms I've seen is kind of bright outside. When a tornado comes through, it looks kind of funky, don't it? It ain't dark and black, it's green. Yeah, it's weird looking. Any of you ever been in a tornado? How many of you have been in a tornado? Several of you. Yeah, they're not fun. I pulled up to a building when they were picking the bricks up off of guys. You know, I just passed by. I just, you know, I drove under one that hadn't sat down. That was in 74, back when some of you weren't born. How are you? Praise God. We need obedience. First Samuel 15.22 says... So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. You know, he was talking to Saul, and Saul had done this, uh, this sacrifice that wasn't even supposed to be happening. And, uh, you know, he basically was rebuking him because what we're supposed to do is be obedient. We can claim to be doing things that are for God when we're actually just fulfilling our own flesh. Amen? We can, we can sign up and do things. We can ask to do things. We can see ourselves in the grand position of this and that. And if we're not called to it, it's going to come to naught. We can sacrifice. You don't know how many ministers sacrifice their families. They're busy, 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 busy doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, and they don't have time for their own kids. Amen? That's not the sacrifice that God wants. He wants us to obey. He wants us to be obedient. And he wants us to do what it is that he's saying. First Samuel 15.23 goes on and says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. And that again was talking to Saul. This was before David was chosen. And we can see this, not to obey then, if we put the two scriptures together, not being obedient is the same thing as rebellion, which is the same thing as witchcraft. That, that progression doesn't work in my mind, but it does in God's word. You know what I mean? When I'm disobedient, I don't feel like I'm acting like some warlock. You know? I've seen those guys on TV. TV ones ain't nothing like the real thing. Amen? But, uh, you know, according to God, those kind of things are rebellious. When we don't do what God's telling us to, we are in rebellion. When we do not answer what he's calling us to, we are in rebellion. And it's the same thing as witchcraft. 
That's the way he looks at it. It means you're working out something else, and it's not according to God's plan and rule. Now, you may not be out working potions and notions and spells and hexes, but the outcome might be, end up being the same. Because of what you're sowing not being obedient, the things that you sow will bring forth fruit. What are those fruit going to be? Well, if he's likening it to rebellion and to witchcraft, it's not going to be good. Amen? You know, there's a reason why God forbid witchcraft and divining and all those kind of things and why he would not be in favor of 900 numbers and call and get your word for the day and your horoscope read and all that because he has a plan for your life. And what you run the risk of is not listening to him and listening to somebody else's plan. You know, I can pick up the paper and I can read a horoscope every day and I can look at that and go, okay, let me read Pisces. Yeah, that sounds like me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I'm not even Pisces. You know what I mean? You know, I look at that stuff and it all sounds so generalized and so, you know, that it could fit anybody. And I remember St. Augustine was uh, sharing that when he was a child, he was born, I can't remember if it was him or if it was the person where he lived. Uh, one or the other of them, him and his childhood friend were born on the same day, same hour, yet one of them was a slave and the other one was a nobleman's son. And if the horoscope was real and it had to do with your birth order and your time and all that kind of stuff, then wouldn't we all have the same outcomes? Wouldn't we all have the same lives? And we don't. You and I don't have the same lives with God. We could be born again on the same day and there's going to be differences and there's going to be different things that God's going to do. I remember when I answered the altar call when I was a young man. This was my first altar call. And I meant it. And I went down to that altar and I remember the guys I was with. And I remember years later, you know, the lives that we were living. And I don't think any of us were serving God. And I don't know that half of them are today. You know, we went away for a long time. We weren't obedient. We've got to be obedient. We've got to live it out. You know, so obey in the Old Testament meant to hear intelligently. If you look up the Old Testament word here that's talking about being obedient, it means to hear intelligently, to obey his word and his voice. You see, when we hear, if we don't hear with the right attitude, we don't do it. You have to hear intelligently. You mean you have to understand what it is that God's speaking to you. There's an underlying current of thinking that if you understood it, then you're going to do it. Amen? To obey would have to be to understand it so that you can do it. In Romans 1, chapter 5, Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. So Paul's saying that it's through him and through the grace he's received this apostleship to be obedient to the faith. Now I want you to note the use of the name. You might remember that... Uh, uh, they were forbidden to speak in that name. Amen? Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He wasn't even there when Peter and John and all that was happening. In fact, he hadn't even stood by Stephen Stoning yet. So, later on down the road, the same current is flowing forth, this obedience and this obedience to the name of Jesus. You might remember, Tess gave me a word. I don't know how many of you are still here. I was one of the last people to get prayed for when Tess was here. And she said something along those lines that I just needed to, you know, to do, go forth and be bold and be obedient. Hallelujah. God help me. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. 